Can I get the best of using Cursor and its powerful composer and agent, along with the brilliant deployment options that you get with Bolt or Replit? And the answer is yes. With Replit, you can now connect via SSH to Cursor and get the best of both worlds. When it comes to building out AI apps, I like to move as fast as possible. I get an idea for an app or a business. I want to launch it very quickly, test it out. If it fails, I want to move on. I don't want to spend ages setting up development environments. So is there a service that can help me do that? Yes, it exists in tools like Bolt and Replit, but the problem is the agents that they have built in, they're good, but they're not the best. I think Cursor is currently the best IDE for AI coding at the moment. So I'm gonna show you how to connect Replit with Cursor as quickly as possible. So if you haven't signed up to Replit, just go to replit.com. And a quick note on the pricing, you can use Replit for free, but if you want to use the SSH feature that allows us to connect cursor and replit it is going to cost you 15 dollars a month and that's just on the yearly subscription realistically you should probably pay the 25 dollars a month because who knows what platform or what improvement is going to come along so i've signed up for 25 dollars a month i think in terms of the time saving that gives me that's well worth um the time you know trying to set up the environment set up the deployment and everything else that goes with that i'm happy to pay that 25 dollars if it's a bit too rich for you, there are much cheaper ways to host. You can just run your own local host, set up the environment manually. It takes a little bit more time, not a big deal, but I'm all about speed. I'm all about how quickly we can get to market with whatever idea we have. So I'm happy to spend this little bit here. But again, if it's not for you, just follow some of my other tutorials and there's no extra costs in those setups, okay? So let's go and log in to Replit. So when we're going to create a new Repel, we are offered the options of the Replit agent. We can choose a template. So we can decide, you know, if we want Node or Python or any of these different environments to get started, or we want to import from a GitHub project. So I'm just gonna start from scratch with the agent. If you've watched any of my other tutorials, you know that I find it way faster to dictate um, using uh, Windows Dictation or Mac Dictation. I have another video on the channel. You can check that out. So let's do that. So I hit Windows and the H key. I'd like to build a small app. It's going to be a landing page for a company called Switch Dimension. And on that landing page, we're going to offer a wait list for a course on Cursor, uh, V0 and um, I'd like to have a form there that will collect a name and an email of anyone that's interested in signing up for the waitlist and the launch of the course. And let's collect all the names and emails in a Postgres database in the back end. Okay, so that's the basic prompt and we're just going to hit start building. Okay, we'll implement a waitlist. We're gonna build the initial prototype using Shad CN UI. So Shad CN UI is great. If you've seen other tutorials, uh, V0 use this component library called Shad CN UI. It's basically a set of pre-built components that makes it easy to just build out the interface of your website. They've already been pre-designed and pre-configured. We can also use those with cursor as well. You should check out one of the other tutorials. It shows you how to step through using that. So the fact that they've picked that as default is great. Approve the plan and start. So this is the typical kind of agent interaction. You've got a manager, product manager style agent that does the actual plan creation. You approve that plan and then it depends on how it's set up in the background. You might have different agents that are actually the like deployment agent or the development agent. I'm not sure how it's running in the back end, but that's typically how it might be approached. Setting up our database. So another great thing about using Replit is that it's got its own Postgres database built in that it can connect to as part of the service. If you were doing this yourself, you'd probably want to set up a database separately using something like Superbase or PlanetScale or Firebase or something like that. You'd have to configure that, connect the two together and run it from there. Whereas with Replit, 
again it's just fired up the whole environment for you and it's also connecting database as standard so these are huge time savers just to get you rolling okay so it's taken us this far we have our page now granted there's some issues here we're going to change some of the wording but that's fine um and we have our wait list down the bottom here and now it's asking for my next action so how do you want how, how do you find the landing page design and waitlist form is everything loaded correctly and looking professional so we'll just give it a yes um, another thing that you need to note is that using the agent each one of the checkpoints that goes through um, is going to cost 25 cent it probably makes a lot of sense to do as many changes as you can in one prompt and see what you can get away with um, and then some of the checkpoints that go through um, are actually going to be free so I think at that point that's enough to test out um, can we edit it I'm going to forget it. I'm going to leave the admin interface and everything else for now okay so let's just move back to the web view so hit this little tab here web view and we can hit that and it should load up our page so we can actually just preview this in another browser by clicking this here and this gives us the development url it's porting from port 5000 to 80 so let's just copy that we can open a new tab here and here we have our site let's go back again to replit really quickly so we can go to pages and home.tsx and we can edit this here so master cursor and we can just hit save here and we see those changes go through okay that's great so we basically have the bones of a app website which is um, a landing page and then we have the ability to capture names and emails and that's actually been saved back to a database database and already that's a big time saver you know trying to develop this out in code connect to a database do any kind of validation or verification um, that's a big time saver so as much as I love Replit and it's really fast to get things going, it's great at deployment, it's great at actually spinning up all these services for you, it gives you a really great head start. But when you start to develop out the app and things get a little bit more complicated, it just starts to fall down a little bit for me personally. I recommend that you just keep going with what you have here and keep developing as much as you can until you start to run into issues or errors with the agent that's here. And then, you know, you can decide to switch over to cursor. It's really a personal preference, but how I like to do it is take advantage of the best of both worlds. So how would we actually connect cursor to Replit to get the best out of that? So let's go and open up a new tab here and we're going to type in ssh so here on the ssh key you're given the option to connect to vs code or cursor but first you're going to need to add your ssh key and that's just a way for your computer to communicate securely with this cloud service which is replit and you can use it for multiple other services you can use it with vs code it's a really good thing to know how to do so um, we can click man first let's open the docs here because they're actually really handy so open those in a new tab and then we're going to click manage ssh key or you can do it up here as well and then we'll click add ssh key and we're going to enter that now in a second but first we need to generate it so let's go back over here to the docs Okay, so we're given some great instructions here on what SSH is. It's, it stands for Secure Shell. And essentially what this is, is it opens up a connection and a transfer between your local machine and the cursor you have installed there or VS Code or whatever and the cloud development environment, um, which is Replit. Okay, cool. Now, just again to note, this is just available for um, core subscribers and teams. So first thing we need to do is just check that we have .ssh um, set up. Um, you'll normally have this done if you're using GitHub or something like that. But let's just go over to our command prompt. And then we'll type this in here. Now this thing here is called a the, the home path. So this is basically a path that you set up 
this is a path that might have previously been set up or not. If you get an error when you hit this in, it means it doesn't actually exist. So instead, you can just type in C dash users. So I do something like this, whatever your username is, you can just delete this out. And instead, you could type C slash users, you're basically copying whatever you have there, 353. Eight, five, and it should work for you in the same way if you haven't got that path set up. You can just set it up by going into your system settings, but we'll just leave that for now. So then hit return. Oh, I made a mistake there. I just needed to put in this slash. And there you go. So it's giving us the .ssh directory and uh, any files that we have in here. If you don't have it set up, you can just um, create that directory. You can just hit mk uh dir and then dot ssh to create it okay so now we've got that in place we want to actually go about generating a uh, key so let's hit copy here again and then go back here and let's paste this command in so basically it's giving the ssh a command to in the home directory in dot ssh uh, create a new key called replit and again if your home path is not set up you can just put in the 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 actual path here and so let's hit return now if we type in dir.ssh uh, we'll see that it's actually been created here okay so now we want to just check out what the content of that file is so let's just hit copy back again and let's hit the command and this is going to tell the notepad to open up the replit.pub which is in that home path again replace that if you need to and then hit return and then over here in this window i'll just drag it over we have our uh, key now i'm going to delete this after the video is created so don't get any smart ideas but always it's important to keep these secret so create uh so i'm just going to copy that rid of that for now and then we want to add this back to our account so let's go back over here and then let's just paste it in and i'm going to call this rs laptop because that's the name of my machine and then we're going to click add ssh and it's telling me that it's been added and then if i go over here to connect now I should just be able to hit the launch cursor command here, or I can use the manual connection, but let's just go with launch cursor, click open. Now I've got this little pop up here. An external application wants to run um, a VS code cursor. Do you want to and open this folder? And I'm going to say yes over here in this window. And do I want to connect to, to Windows, let to Linux, Windows or Mass? So the thing is, if you're connected to Replit, it's going to be Linux. It's downloading VS code. Okay, that's fine. Let's get rid of that. Activating extensions. Okay, great. So what we're seeing now is the exact same file structure as you saw. So if you see here, we've got the exact same file structure. So let's see if we can make um, an edit. So let's go back over here. We'll go to client, source, pages, and then home. And let's put in an uh, invert comma here and let hit control S to save. Let's go straight back over and then boom, instantaneous change. So we now have cursor working alongside everything that's stored up here and then i can actually go and deploy this as a fully working app now so if i go to deploy i can decide to just put it on auto scale and deploy that to a certain url and then i can actually assign a domain to that as well if i want but that's kind of outside of the scope of this tutorial but we'll we'll cover that in one of the next ones so we've been using this agent here to get us so far and it's got everything set up and we have all the power of what you get with replit in terms of the environments, the deployments, the connection to Postgres, the database, 
all that kind of setup that takes a hell of a lot of time. And we then also have the power of cursor. So I can go ahead here, open up my AI pane. Let's switch over to the agent. Can you make this website dark mode with accents of yellow and give it some Radix UI icons to really make it pop? Okay, I'm going to install these packages here. I'm going to run, so it's saying CD into the client and NPM install Lucid React. Adding in the color changes, UI improvements, added icons. Okay, oh, I, I need to install NPM install Lucid React, so let's run that again. Perfect, icons are now installed. And let's click accept. And then if we go back over to replit again. Oh yeah, cool. So starting to get a little bit more interesting now. Lots of little changes we need to make. I have a whole tutorial on basically talking your way through um, updating the design using a mixture of V0 and cursor. But um, I think this was hopefully really powerful just to see how you can get started by using cursor and replit together because you're really using the best of both worlds. Um, you've got replit, which has the ability to spin up a development server really quickly. It installs everything for you. You don't have to worry about any kind of dependencies or what machines you're on. You can give access to that machine to somebody else. And then you've got a temporary URL that you can give to anybody to actually go and test out your app. Now you can actually go and press the deploy button within Replit as well and actually deploy the whole site to be a working app. So technically within just a few minutes, you can go from developing a site with um, Replit agent, um, moving over to cursor and doing any edits that you want and improving upon it and then deploying a whole app within just a few minutes. And that's uh, really powerful and such a game changer. So hopefully you got uh, some use out of this. I am actually working on a course around cursor and replit. I'm going to put a link in the description where you can sign up to the waitlist if you want. And uh, thanks so much for your time. More to come.